Hello, I'm Jonas. And I'm Simon. And we are Tideland Studio. Um, Tideland Studio applies architectural technologies and mythologies in field research to uh, capture phenomena um, that are relevant to our time. Phenomena such as, uh, as, as climate change um, and, and other issues that, that, uh, that we find uh, uh, important uh, in, in our life and in our uh, practice. Um, in Thailand we combine um, artistic practice and architectural practice and, and uh, um, a sort of environmental uh, research uh, site. Um, we work in the intersection between uh, architecture, arts and uh, field research to uh, create um, experiences that, that uh, make people um, more aware of, of, uh, of important issues uh, in, in our time. We, we very much, like coming as a background, as architects, both of us, we very much see architecture as a mythology to um, unfold, um, not only building buildings, but also looking at our, in our, our environment in a new um, and maybe more engaging way. And this mythology of architecture is what we apply to also look at, for example, natural phenomenon. Um, and for us, architecture is a way of creating stories um, of, of our nature and how we experience um, our surroundings and, and capture them in physical installations, in digital representations, um, yeah, and even in written um, stories. So for us, that's, I guess, in, t in the essence what architecture is. So Tidal and Studio started out with a, a fascination with, um, with how to use some of these technologies that, that we, we learned in architecture school to, uh, to bring new perspectives uh, on our surroundings. Perspectives like uh, time uh, and change, things that are, that are very abstract to our everyday life, but that we can sort of get a new understanding or a deeper appreciation for um, when using uh, methods that give us new representations of space or give us new perspectives on natural uh, environments. So we were, we were quite interested in how we could use these technologies um, um, not only through research but also applied um, in practice um, as a way to also maybe showcase for the public or give it, yeah, come closer to the public, um, the public sphere so they also could experience how, what these tools can do and how they are available um, and what kind of narratives that we can create by using these. So today we are at the Design Museum Denmark where we have uh, done an exhibition about our travels to uh, Svalbard. Um, our mission was to, uh, to capture um, how the landscape is changing at the moment. So uh, what, we f what we find on, on in the exhibition is our, uh, is our interpretation of, of these changes. So through using technologies such as, as drones and 3D scanners and large-scale 3D printers, we, we wanted to convey the different shapes and forms that, that these uh, changing conditions uh, sort of uh, revolve around. One of the things that, that, uh, that are on display is this uh, three meter tall um, 3D print of, uh, of a milled water uh, channel. So what it is, is, uh, is the negative space that we have uh, 3D scanned where the, the milled water from the, the glacier has uh, dug deep into the, to the glacier. And, and based on this uh, 3D scan and this uh, 3D print, we can sort of uh, tell the, the different seasons uh, in the way that, that, uh, that the, the, the shapes uh, of, of the 3D print is, uh, is conveyed. So it's almost like, a, like the rings of, of a tree. Um, and, and that is sort of, it, it encapsulates what we wanted to do with the exhibition. That is to, to look at at time or to capture time uh, using these, uh, these uh, technologies. Another thing we were quite interested in about um, with the exhibition is how can you maybe capture climate change? Um, so 
going from what we all experience today is photographs of the Arctic, for example, uh, in this case, or graphs of how the temperature is changing. How can we also, um, can, we, can we add a new type of sensibility to climate change um, um, through these technologies? So we try to use 3D scanners or um, drones to capture the environment and manipulate it digitally and then take it out to maybe uh, to create a physical um, representation of these spaces so people maybe could get a bodily experience of what is happening up at the Arctic, which, is com which can be really hard to understand when, when you haven't been there yourself. Um, and this is one way of trying to maybe yeah, three-dimensionalize climate change um, in a very subtle way. Um, and the whole, pro like the whole exhibition is part of a larger research project that we are currently working on, which we are calling Archive of Endangered Spaces, where you could see this, this exhibition being the first file into this archive, where our hope in the future is to, to um, expand this archive with different files from different places um, on Earth. Currently, we are working on um, um, looking at trees here in Denmark, uh, old oak trees that are up to 2,000 years old, and how they, how nature, like changes in human activities, are yeah. making it hard for these oak trees to live. Um, and then what happens over time is what we are trying to capture as another um, part of this archive that we are trying to develop right now. The reason why we use architectural uh, tools and architectural methods, uh, looking at uh, looking at landscapes through, for example, the section or the plan, is is that um, it brings a certain certain uh, scale to to uh, to a landscape that is otherwise um, very abstract. Uh, I think a lot of what there is a sort of uh, there is a gap between our understanding of climate change intellectually. Um, and then our bodily understanding of, of what happens on a day-to-day on -day basis. And I think architecture is, is in a sense, a way to bridge that gap um, because it, it brings attention to the body, it brings attention to the, to the senses. Um, and that's uh, why I think that, that architects have a, a huge potential in, in working with, uh, with, with climate change and and to, to communicate what is happening to our planet at the moment. Mm. In, in, uh, in Aarhus, we have, uh, um, we, we've done a collaboration with, uh, with an artist and another studio uh, uh, about doing this, um, this public space and, 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 and artwork uh, next to the, to the new school of architecture the, at, the, at one of the lowest points in the city which means that as the, the sea rises, then this will be one of the first places to be, to be flooded. And, and working with that uh, as a sort of uh, a narrative about climate change was something that inspired us to do this uh, project. Um, what we see is, uh, is a, a digital um, performance, you could say. We have uh, scaled up uh, uh, three life rings and uh, thrown them uh, from the top of the building and where they uh, land inside the in, inside the space, they create ripples in in uh, in this in in the ground um, that continues uh, outwards. So there is an obvious uh, fascination with the beauty of water, but also the, the destructive quality of, of of water in that sense. Um, some of the things that we have. Uh, been very fascinated with was how do we use these technologies like digital simulation technology and and um, CNC machines to to create an undulating landscape. Uh, and it's a space where you literally can walk on water. Um, but I think these um, this this new public space in Aarhus, which we're calling a new arc, um, and this exhibition at the um, Design Museum, very much encapsulates what we at Art Thailand Studio are trying to do where we on the research side are trying to see how can we use these tools um, and push the boundaries um, for what, is, what, are, what are possible with these uh, new technologies. And then we, from those learnings, we can also apply that in an architectural context. Um, for example, as we see here in the plaza, where we were able to create 100 unique tiles on a very low budget um, and, and, and also create a really strong story that uh, encapsulates something very important at that specific place. I think one of the things that we find fascinating about running a research-based practice is how research and practice 
speaks to each other. Um, through research, we are allowed or able to look at what some of the, for example, in our case, what the newest type of technologies um, allow, are able to do, and we are able to try to push boundaries within, within that field. And from those learning, we can apply that into, into, into practice. Um, and when we're sitting with low budgets or um, clients, um, we are able to apply this knowledge in, in new ways that yeah, we, um, we, know we wouldn't have been, we wouldn't know existed if we haven't had the possibilities to explore it in the research world. Um, so I think it's this dialogue that we, we find fascinating and, it, and it's something that really pushes us forwards as a small practice and gives us the edge maybe um, against maybe some of the larger practices out there. Um, when you one of the most important uh, things that 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 we get from this is also uh, learning how to uh, how to collaborate uh, across disciplines. I think that is that is one of the most important things that that uh, and uh, and a young architecture studio has to do um, today. We need to know our own limitations, mm -hmm. um, and that is something that we that we uh, that we we learn from this. Like always talking to to people who are smarter than us in, in, in various fields, because it's, it's, it's something that, that allows us to grow and, and makes us smarter uh, in, the, in the long run.